Alam barely woke up with a Sitha and Tynes snuggled up to him and felt tired, but not the bad kind of tired. It had a sense of accomplishment and he knew the reason very well. They had worked hard and managed to avoid a likely fatal end from the debris tearing the warships and their home apart. He stroked the girl's back softly. No two ways about it. I am very lucky to have ended up here in the end, he thought. I wouldn't trade living with these two for anything. He stopped stroking and wondered if they hadn't yet cleared the debris because they were still sleeping together. He played back his memories and was sure they had done, then ate and drank until they had their fill. And then memories became hazy, and with effort he realized they got up from the couch and with mutual support went to bed because they were too tired to get to their own by themselves. He chuckled silently. No wonder! The two snuggled up tight at his side and in his arms was still a pleasant surprise to him, and he stroked their back softly again. Asitha stirred at his side and snuggled up tighter. It might have been because of the last days, but she felt more comfortable than she could imagine from a bed in an emergency pod, even if they'd made it as cozy as they had. She thought the gentle stroking of her back and the warm embrace was probably the reason, and she was happy to be with Alain. Alain, she thought, and remembered sleeping once more in his bed because she was too tired to find her own. That wasn't the only reason, though, when a little voice in her head reminded her of the last couple of times they slept together and how she'd always imagined that's how it was to live with a good mate. He said we were cute and wanted to stay together, but would he go as far as to become my mate? To actually be? The image of the two of them in intimacy brought back the memory of her sitting in his neck and the sensation of someone other than herself touching her there. Tynus dared not move when she woke up and instantly knew where she was. It made her both giddy and nervous, and she didn't want anything to end the situation she was in, even if this was all she would get from him. The time he pressed against her back in the sensation of his hips against her behind was something she told herself was a fluke, something that was unavoidable because of the circumstances, and that wishing he'd go all the way with her a futile dream. She wished his fingers stroking her back gently would stroke her underneath her tail as well. Asitha's leg on his and her hips pressing against his thigh, and Tynes's tail rubbing against his front, brought back the memories of his close encounters with the girls and stirred his nether regions. He didn't know what to think anymore, as doubts about just how deep his attraction to these girls was and how far he was willing to go with Tynes, and if they could accept that he couldn't choose between the two of them, and if Asitha would be disgusted if he did choose to sleep with Tynes. He groaned in frustration. Alain, are you in pain? whispered Asitha. He opened his eyes to see her and Tynes looking worried at him. His heart pounded at the sight of these two, looking intense at him, and he wanted to pull them tight and tell them he loved them. I'm all right, he sighed, just the tiredness rearing its ugly head now that it's over. The look in their eyes softened and he cursed himself for his cowardliness. Asitha stroked his forehead. We have a good excuse to take it easy for a while. I don't think either of our sides will expect us to continue our work right away after all we did to save the ships. How about we clean up and then laze around? He chuckled. I like that idea, he said, and they looked at Tynus. I'm all for it, she said. After a quick cleanup, they prepared snacks and drinks and sank down on the couch. What now? Alain asked. Movie, said Tynus. To ease into things. Good idea, Asita said. All right, movie it is, said Alain, and gave Tynes the remote. Your choice. Tynes scrolled through the list while Alain poured drinks and selected a fantasy trilogy. Soon enough, the girls cuddled up with Alain unconsciously while being engrossed into the movie. He himself only realized it when he already had his hands on their thighs and stroked the inside slowly with his thumbs, and he glanced sideways at them. If they showed any reaction, it was them moving their legs against his and holding his arms even tighter against them in their embrace, and he continued caressing their soft fur. Halfway into the movie, the female knight knelt beside the wounded dragon that had helped her defeat the treacherous duke. Grego, she said softly and caressed his cheek. Why? I was sent to defeat you. He smiled softly at her. A dragon's weakness, pretty maidens who try their earnest best to protect others and make them happy. Our nature compels us to support them even if they hate us. A tear rolled down her cheek. I don't hate you, 
she whispered. The girls gripped Alon's arms tighter, and he smiled softly. I don't want to see the rest if they can't be together, said Tynas softly. Don't worry, whispered Alan, and she relaxed her grip a little. If only real life were as simple as these movies, Asitha said. We wouldn't have to live with all these hostilities between our species. Alain chuckled. If it was up to me, I'd tell everyone Sylth women are great. Asitha giggled. On what basis? I admit, I only know the two of you, but even if you were the only two nice ones, plenty of men would still want to be with a cute or sexy feline woman. She poked his cheek. You're full of it, as they say on your world. He grinned. Sort of, he said, which is why I need to excuse myself now. She giggled as he stood up and looked at Tynus staring after him. She knew that look all too well. You're in love with him, right? Tynus gazed at her with big eyes. I, I don't, Asitha giggled. I can see how your ears prick up when he's around and your tail keeps moving against him. Tynus looked down and blushed. Don't you feel like that about him too? Asitha sighed and poured herself another drink. I'm afraid to find out he doesn't feel the same way about me, she said and drank. It's not like he really said he was interested in me, or you. Tinas gazed at the screen where the dragon embraced the sleeping knight. He wouldn't be interested in me that way. He only wants real women. Asitha hummed, but he hasn't treated you any different than me, so you won't have to worry about being hated. Your home is here with us. Tynus smiled a little at Asitha. Thanks, she said, then looked at Alang coming back into the living. He sat down between the two of them. What did I miss? Lots. Asitha giggled, and his puzzled look only made her and Tynus laugh. He figured it had to be some sort of girl talk and just let them be when they cuddled up to him again and continued watching the movie. He enjoyed the situation too much to waste time finding out what Asitha meant. After the movies, they were fired up enough to take on the next quest in their game and explored and fought until they were tired and hungry again. I'll fix something up quickly, Alain said, but Asitha pulled him back into the couch when he stood up. Just sit. You took most of the brunt in the last two attacks while we didn't need to move a lot, so we'll take care of it. He chuckled. I'm not complaining. The girls went to the kitchen and he turned on the music, then chuckled when he looked at them. Asitha looked back. What's so funny? He grinned. You two swaying your tails to the rhythm. They looked back at their tails and giggled. You enjoy that, eh? Asitha said and stuck out her tongue playfully. Of course, he said and leaned on the back of the couch. I wouldn't be a man if I didn't like looking at a couple of sexy swaying rears. Asitha laughed and Tynes blushed and giggled. We've been called predators by humans, but I believe they are the worst ones, Asitha said and returned to the couch with Tynes and trays of finger foods. She sat down and stuffed a piece into his mouth. Eat this before you attack us. He chewed and leaned back into the couch. I guess this food will have to do then. He chuckled, swallowed, and opened his mouth. Next, Asitha giggled. Tynes, your turn. Tynes blushed and Alain gestured at his mouth. Feed me, she giggled and quickly placed another piece of food in his mouth. Good girl, he said while he chewed and she giggled while blushing more. The girls fed him while playing the next movie and afterwards were snuggled up together again, completely tipsy from the drinks and their full stomachs. I want to sleep, but I also feel too cozy to go to bed, Alain said. Asitha giggled. We could fix that by making you uncomfortable, she said and poked his chest. Hey now, don't ruin the one good thing I have, he said and chuckled. She looked up at the ceiling. Oh, well, I feel sleepy too. Might as well join you one more time, she said and looked at Tynus. How about it? Help me out here? Tynus blushed. Would that still be all right? Asitha grinned. He likes cats sleeping in his bed. He has nothing to complain about. Alain chuckled. Don't I get a say in it? Asitha poked him again. Not this time, she said and set up. We'll go change. She took Tines's hand and pulled her along to their pods, and Alain chuckled inside. Yep, willful cats. He went to his pod and changed into the shorts he used for sleeping, looked at his unmade bed, then sat down on the edge. The girls came in a little later, both giggling and dressed in the plain shirts for sleeping, 
because the rest were in the laundry. Alain looked at them, their eyes bright and shiny. Asitha's with a hint of cheeky, Tynes's with coy, and he knew he'd want more if they joined him in bed. Tynes noticed his serious look and stopped giggling. Alain? He sighed and leaned with his elbows on his knees, looking down. I can't keep going on like this. Tynes's heart stopped at the first thing that came to mind. He doesn't want us or just me. Asitha gripped her shirt. Is it something we did? She asked softly. Alain shook his head slowly. I don't know what to do, he said. I'm very attracted to the both of you. Both girls felt their hearts skip a beat, then pound hard. Really? Asked Asitha. He nodded once. With just you might be the least weirdest since you're fully female. But I feel the same for you, Tanes. I have no interest in men at all. But you're just too cute, and I can only think of you as an adorable girl. Tynus clutched her tail and Asitha looked at her. I wish I could set it aside, because I really enjoy being with you and want to live out a fun life with both of you. He sighed again. I'm sorry for the mess I created. Asitha stroked his head and he looked up at her. She leaned closer and kissed him softly on his lips. There's no reason to feel sorry. His eyes went wide. It doesn't bother you. What would? That I'm also attracted to Tines. She smiled softly at Tynes, who bit her lip. She is cute, yes, she said and caressed Alain's cheek. What's wrong with feeling attracted to her? She looked at Tynes again. It's up to you now. Tynes looked at her, quickly at Alain, then down at her tail. Do you mean it? She whispered. Alain looked at her. Honestly, I can't return the favor, so to speak. But I want to love you like the girl you are. She thought her heart would explode while her whole body shivered and could barely speak the words. All I want is for you to treat me like one. He reached out his hand to her, and Asitha smiled and felt a tingle growing inside her abdomen when Tynes put her hand in his. Asitha woke up first and purred with satisfaction and stroked Elan's chest when he woke up. He smiled softly at her. Hey, he whispered. Hey, she whispered and returned the smile. No second thoughts? She shook her head lightly. Unless you have any regrets. He stroked her back. Absolutely none. She lifted up her head and kissed him. Then we're good. She giggled when she noticed Tynes's ear twitch. Aren't you going to wake up? Tynes stroked Alain's chest with one finger. I'm afraid to wake up and discover this was just a dream. Or Alain regretting his confession. She whispered. Alain kissed her head. I might have one regret about that. She held still. I wonder if I should have confessed my feelings sooner. Asitha chuckled. If you tell us when you first knew what you felt, maybe we can compensate for all that time. How long has it been since we landed here to do our jobs? He asked, and both girls giggled. I take back thinking he's just like a silt male. He's worse, said Asitha, and pushed a pillow in his face. Is it really okay to take things slowly? asked Tynus, while she and Alan fixed their meal in the kitchen. Don't you human males want a mate as soon as you have a willing female? Alan blushed. Yeah, usually we do, he said, when things are straightforward. She gazed at the slices of bread in a container. I complicated things, didn't I? Alan put down his knife and turned her gently by her hips towards him. Not more than I did, but it's also the fact that we're different species and I don't want to make any mistakes and risk damaging my future with you two. She smiled a little at him. I don't think you can. He pulled her close and kissed her. Maybe not, but I'm nervous about it all the same. She nodded while her heart beat fast and shivers ran along her spine again. We both are. I'll be the one to be the least nervous then, Asitha said and hugged Alam from behind. Tines giggled. What could make you nervous? He could eventually choose you over me? No way, said Alain, and turned to pull her in front of him next to Tynes and kiss her. I can't choose between you two. I'm also too greedy to let either of you go. She giggled. Now I feel left out if I have nothing to worry about. Alain hummed. You can worry about how fast I'll want you at my side after work. I can do that, she said and kissed him. Asatha floated through the corridors of the Amaroth on her way to the next recovery job and hummed softly. You're in a good mood, said Tynes over the communication channel. I haven't heard you hum a melody before. 
Asitha pushed herself once more forward with a relaxed jump and stretched out her arms. How could I not? It's the same reason for you. She chuckled. Tynes pulled out a power distributor and smiled as she looked it over. Yeah, it's all his fault. I'll gladly take the blame, said Alain while he checked up on the growth of the vegetables in one of the artificial greenhouses on the Walkurea. Now I can say I achieved something worthwhile out here. It's a good thing neither of our sides knows about this, otherwise we'd be known for another achievement, chuckled Asitha and stopped at a junction to check directions. Except some people up high wouldn't appreciate it. Alan adjusted the air mix in one plant tube. I hope that our sides are at peace by the time they pull the plug on this project, so we can live somewhere peacefully together. If we're still at war, we'll just have to elope to a far off world, just like in that movie. Or wander through space like that one family, said Tynus, our own ship in which we can sustain ourselves, going where we want to go or even get lost into uncharted territory. Asitha pushed herself into one of the dim corridors. That would suit a bunch of loners like you, Yao. Asita, Alan called out. Asita's heart pounded wild while she stared with large eyes into the darkness of the corridor. Something rushed past me, she panted. What? Are you all right? Was it some loose object? Asked Tynus. Asitha took a deep breath. I couldn't see it clearly. I think it was something gray and a bit long in shape. It certainly wasn't something that drifted casually like the rest. Alan hurried to his suit. I'm coming over. Tynus put down her tools. So am I. She arrived first at the wider area where Asitha had retreated to. Could it be a leftover drone from that gang? She asked. Those should have all returned automatically to their ship, said Alain as he entered the Amaroth at the front side. I haven't found any on the Walkurea later. Could it be a Sylth drone? I'd expect we'd have met it earlier if it was, said Asitha, or we would have been told to expect any. You have been through that area before, right? Yes, there was nothing here before. Tynes stared into one passageway when she thought she saw something moving in the shadows. What if the debris triggered it or hit something? All drones should have been removed from the ship, said Asitha. I think it's best we assume it's something from outside. Alan arrived and the girls caught him when he floated in their direction. The bigger question is if it's hostile or not. It didn't seem to really attack me, so maybe not. A gray spot in the passageway's shadows caught Tynes's attention. There, she said and pointed. I think I see it. Asitha and Alain turned to look at the passageway, but the spot disappeared. I can't see that well in the dark, said Alain. I think I did see something move, said Asitha. If that was a drone, it's quite smart if it hides. Could it be an alien? said Tines and clung to Alain. I highly doubt that, said Alain. How could it survive in this environment? Whatever it is, we better catch it said Asita. Who knows what it'll do? I agree, said Alain. Our safety isn't guaranteed if we don't know what it is. So how are we going to catch it? The three looked over the blueprint of the Amaroth projected onto the table in the living. This is where it surprised me, Asitha said and pointed out the corridor. This is the rest area we were in. Plenty of places to go around in, Alain said. If we assume it's holding up somewhere around there, it can go into any direction along the corridors and the stairs. Maybe we can track it on the sensor net and surveillance systems, said Tynes. When I was on the bridge, I saw most of it was still in working condition. Nice, said Alain. Maybe we can find out what it is and get a clue on how to catch it. Asita looked at the time. We still have time for a light meal before our suits are charged and the tanks are full. Let's eat before we take a look. I'll go check our weapons, said Alain, and stood up. We'd better take them with us, just in case. Asitha looked up at him. Then we'll fix the meal. Thanks, he said and caressed hers and Tynus's ears. I'll be right back. Asitha looked at Tynus, smiling happily and chuckled. You really lit up ever since he confessed. Tynus blushed. I could only dream of experiencing true romance while reading or watching the few stories back home. I didn't even dare to dream of a mate. Asitha smiled. Yeah, I know she said softly. Tynes pulled it up her knees and embraced them. Even if he doesn't take me like a mate in the end, I'll still feel as happy as I can be. Asitha reached out and stroked Tynes's ear. As passionate as he kisses and holds us both, I'm sure he will, she said, 
and tingles spread through her body at the memories. But I can understand that final hesitation. Tines nodded and sighed. I'm keeping you two back, aren't I? As Sitha sat up on her knees and gave Tynes a kiss on her forehead. Don't worry about that. I don't think he'd be comfortable doing it with me without making his decision about you. She took Tynes's hand and pulled her up as she stood up. Come on, we have a mighty male to feed before the hunt. Tynes giggled and followed Asitha to the kitchen. Alain looked around the bridge of the Amaroth when he and the girl stepped onto it. Military intelligence would definitely like a word with me if they knew I spent time on a Sylth military vessel in its bridge. Tynes chuckled. I think ours would like a word with us in that case as well. It's a bit more Spartan than the Walkurea, he said as he looked over the dreary gray surfaces and sturdy switches, buttons, and levers, and the broad captain's chair in the middle. We use more touch surfaces for non-essential systems. Asitha took a look at the engineering console to check if everything was still the way she left it. Our military doesn't take any chance of system failures because of controls shorting out on the bridge or accidental swipes across such surfaces. Makes sense, Huan, said Alan, and watched Tynus activate multiple screens with views in and around the ship. Some showed block artifacts. Several network circuits or cameras have been damaged by the debris said Tinas, and switched views to the area around where the unknown entity had been seen. She looked over the screens laid out in a grid in the sensor list. There are a couple of dead areas. Asitha joined them and studied the screens in the dark images. That's the corridor, right? She said with a nod at the screen in the center of the grid. Yes, said Tinas, and displayed the floor plan on another screen. I centered the other camera views around that one for reference. Can you record this? Alan asked. Hang on, Tynes said and typed on the console. I get a warning that storage is damaged. We might only be able to save bits and pieces. That might be enough if we're lucky, he said and studied the views. There, said Asita and pointed at one screen. Tynes and Alam stared at the screen in the dark interior of a compartment with crates scattered about. Tynes adjusted the view to make it more clear. Is there no night mode? asked Alam. There is, said Tynes. It's just never used because we can see better in the dark compared to you humans, and the sensor light is almost as bright as regular light to us. It might alert that thing. Right, said Alon. Good thinking. Artifacts in the feed didn't provide a Sitha and Tanes more of an advantage, and they peered closely at the screen. Does that look like a bug? asked Asitha. It looks like it has legs. Yeah, said Tanes, and pointed at a nearly round gray shape at one end of two smaller round shapes. That could be an abdomen like a spider. Alain's eyes adjusted enough to the darkness to see its shape. Insects are often the base for drones, he said. A spider wouldn't surprise me. The only thing I wonder is how it propels itself in zero gravity. They observed it as it crawled out through the crates and pawed at some of the contents that it spilled out, then went outside. They followed it on the other views and watched it crawl along walls and ceilings for a while before returning to the compartment and crawling around the crates again. Is it looking for something? Asked Alain. The spider left the compartment again and crawled around the corridors again, only in a different direction. Exploration? Asitha said, mapping the area maybe. It returned to the compartment once more and pawed around the spilled contents. Alain looked at Tynes. Can you play back what's been recorded? Tynes typed on the console and a broken video played on one screen. Stop said Alon after a few moments. Go back a second. Tines rewound and Alon pointed at the image. Can you zoom in there? Tines zoomed in on the spider-like entity. Alon peered closer then stood straight. It's damaged. At least one of its legs is missing and it looks like the things scattered there are robotic parts. Tines pulled up the recordings from the other cameras and zoomed in on a few clearer images. Indeed, it looks like two of its six legs are damaged and part of its abdomen is torn. How was it able to move so fast in that condition then? Asked Asitha. It doesn't look like it could do that by jumping. Miniature thrusters? Asked Alon. There was no light from exhaust when it passed me, said Asitha. Maybe we can find out if we try to catch it, said Alon. Keep recording the feeds, and if it escapes, maybe we captured something on video. Asitha nodded. We'll have to start somewhere. The three donned their suits and jumped through the corridors towards the entity. 
Close to the compartment, they moved slowly towards the entrance while keeping their weapons ready. It appeared in the doorway when they were near and they froze. It looked at them for a moment, then crawled quickly away along the ceiling of the corridor. It's afraid, said Tines. Maybe it's retreating because it's damaged, said Asitha. Let's go after it. The three jumped through that corridor at once. The spider crawled from ceiling to wall and turned into another corridor. I'll try to cut it off, said Alain, and turned into another one. I think this one comes out at that rest area in the end. All right, said Asitha, and continued on with Tynes. At another junction, Tynes split off while Asitha kept in pursuit of the spider. It's still headed for the rest area, she said. Keep a distance if we corner it there, said Alain. It might turn hostile in that case. The spider crawled into the area, and Alain arrived first at his end. He shut the entrance behind him. This way is blocked. Asitha and Tynes arrived, and the spider crawled towards the far wall. They closed their entrances and kept still while staring at the spider. What do we do now? I'll try to approach it, said Alan. Be careful, said Tynes and gripped her gun. I'll back off at the first sign of a threat, he said and pushed himself gently towards a pillar in front of him. I'll move step by step. The spider stayed motionless on the wall while he paused for a minute at the pillar and observed the spider. He did the same at the bench he paused at next and another pillar after that close enough to see it had two black lenses at the front of its head and a smaller set behind them on the side. Its abdomen had a crab shell contour and was somewhat flat. This thing's pretty big now that I see it up close. The body's about the size of my torso. I'm going to move to the bench in front of it. Tines felt her heartbeat in her throat. Please be careful, darling. Alain blushed and nearly slipped as he pushed himself away from the pillar but the spider moved and darted across the open space towards an open-air vent. Alain, said Asitha. Nothing happened to what else, he said, and turned to see where the spider went, just in time to see it slip into the duct. Crap, it just shot away from nothing. Did you see how? Asitha asked while she jumped into his direction, following Tynes. I didn't see anything like a jet thrust, but I thought I saw something shooting through the air before it jumped. Tinas pulled close to Alain and looked at the air vent. We're not going to find it in there. Maybe we caught something on the feeds, said Alain. Let's go check them out. They returned to the bridge, and Tinas pulled up all the feeds with footage of the spider, and they watched them closely for any clue on the spider. When they were watching the feed from the rest area, Asitha chuckled suddenly. What's up? asked Alain, bemused. She grinned a little at Tinas. Darling! Tynes blushed at once. I just blurted it out because I was worried. Asitha giggled. Nothing wrong with that. It was just so sudden for the first time. Tynes glanced at Alain, who blushed as well. If you don't like it, he leaned closer to her and kissed her. I do like it, he said and chuckled. I just don't know what to call you two yet. Asitha pouted. I don't know either, but does that mean I don't get a kiss? Alain laughed once and pulled her closer for a kiss. I have kisses for you two anytime you want one, she grinned. All right then. Ah, said Tynes. The two others looked startled at her. She pointed at the screen. Sorry, it was just that the spider escaped just now, she said and rewound the video. Alain chuckled. Right, we were busy with that before we got distracted, he said. Although in a very nice way. They watched the feet again and Alain pointed at the screen. It turned a bit and extended two legs before it jumped. Tynes rewound and played it in slow motion. Wait, did you see that? Asked Asitha. Something shot across the screen. Maybe I can overlay the images to make it clearer, said Tynes and worked on the console. The image blurred at some points, but contrast increased on others. That's it, said Asitha. The three of them looked at thin wires extending from the tips of the spider's raised legs. It pulls itself across open space by wires, said Alain. That's what I call a very interesting feature. Do we try to trap it again? Asked Tines. Asitha pondered. We don't really have anything to trap it with while it can escape from us with those wires. Alain leaned back and frowned in thought while Tynes watched the spider return to the crates and scurry around. What if we don't try to trap it but have it come to us instead? Asitha and Alain looked at her. How... And on hat on co asked. She nodded at the screen, 
where the spider pawed at the robot parts again. Maybe it just wants someone to fix it. Disposal storage, said Asita when they arrived at the spider's compartment. Everything in here would have been trashed anyway, so maybe that's why they didn't bother clearing it after the crash. They shone lights inside and, as expected, didn't see the spider. Looking closer at the crates, they noticed they contained mostly defective electronic and mechanical parts. Alan turned over the crate with the spilled robotic parts and looked inside. These must be the spare parts for that thing. Asita reached inside and took out a portable terminal. Maybe this will give us a clue, she said and booted it up. The screen opened up on a selection menu and she chose documentation. It's an experimental drone for the military. This terminal contains all the technical documentation. Nice, Yinko said Tynus. Then we can try to fix it. Asitha nodded and returned to the menu. It has a command console, she said and opened it and text scrolled up. This is output from the spider's operating system. She read the last few lines. Avoiding hostiles, it says. Tynus noticed movement at the doorway. It's here! They saw the spider near the doorway just before it vanished into the shadows again. Asita read the additional output. Return to Maker, it says. It must be trying to find the ones who created it. And it probably sees us as hostiles because we're armed, said Tynes. Shall we see if it comes to us if we show we can repair it? Asked Alan as he looked at the leg in his glove. It's here, said Asita while she monitored the spider's command console. It designated us unknown entities. I see it at the entrance in front of us, said Tines. It worked. Alain looked at the spare parts in front of him on the floor of the rest area. They had sealed off and pressurized the whole section so they could get out of their suits and wait for the spider to find them with the crate they'd taken from the storage. I hope these parts work though. Tines scrolled through a log on a tablet they'd found in the crate as well. I think so. These should be spare parts for the test they performed on this thing. From the sound of the notes, the team that built it wasn't very happy with it getting turned into a military project, and certainly not when they said it wasn't ready for battle testing. She skimmed further. The operating system is an AI based on the behavior of a loyal pet, and they feared it couldn't handle threats of destruction. They took it and put it through a field test anyway, and declared it unsuitable after it was shot. That explains the damage, said Asita and why it's reacting to us in this way when it's a new AI and hasn't learned to interact much. We'll just have try if we can get through to it if we treat it as a smart pet, said Alam and picked up a segment of a leg. Can you show me the construction prints? Tynes held up the tablet for him to read and he attached two leg segments together in a clear way for the spider to see. So there's a coil of wire inside the thick middle segment of the leg with an end that can cling to surfaces through a tiny electric charge. That end is either fixed to the tip of the leg or shot like a bullet towards the surface. He held up the section of leg for a moment. Any change in status? No, said Asita. That might be a good thing, though. Alan attached the inner segment of the leg and held it up. I see its threat index lowered, said Asita. It must be realizing we're not a threat, said Tynes. We can do this. Alan looked at the leg. I'm going to try something, he said and stood up. What are you going to do? asked Tynes. He chuckled. Show off my brilliant construction work, he said and moved towards the spider. Stop, said Asitha when he was halfway to the entrance. Thread index went up. Okay, he said, put down the assembled leg on the floor and gave it a push to slide it further towards the spider and moved backwards to the girls and sat down. Now we wait. The spider crawled forward after a little while. Examine, said Asitha in a hushed voice. It moved carefully towards the leg, and when it reached it a little later, it pawed it and rolled it over. Asitha hummed low. Your work wasn't that good. He looked at her. What? Why? It only says potential maker found. He snorted and coughed while she grinned, and Tynes laughed. Fine, he said and cleared his throat. I'll assemble another leg. It needs two new ones anyway. The second leg was assembled quicker and Alain moved towards the spider until it backed away, then slid it across the floor before returning to the girls. Good job. Thread index is lowered again, said Asita. They watched the spider paw at the second leg and take it into its mandibles, then wait. Status? asked Alain. I'm not sure, said Asita. There's no other change I'm aware of. 
Maybe it's reluctant to come closer because we're here next to Alam, said Tynus. We should try moving further back. She put down the tablet for Alam and moved further back with Asitha. Yes, threat index went down, said Asitha, and the spider moved bit by bit towards Alam. When it was near him, Alam held up the tablet with the assembly instructions for attaching the leg to the body for the spider to see. Shall I replace your damaged leg? The spider moved forward again, put down the leg in front of him, and turned his side towards him. You'd better upgrade me from potential maker after this. Alan took his time to remove the remains of its leg to avoid being seen as a threat again from sudden moves and checked every step while attaching the new leg. This should be done, he said and set up. Test it. The spider turned around both ways, moved the leg in all directions, shot the wire towards a wall and retracted it. It went for the first leg Alan had assembled and returned it to him to replace the other damaged leg. You are now a fully fledged maker, chuckled Asitha. Good. My reputation and pride as a tinkerer was at stake. The second leg passed the test and it seemed to Alain the spider acted less wary. Threat index is very low, said Asita. Tines, try moving towards Alain. Tines stood up and halfway towards Alain, Asita said, stop. Alain fished out a replacement piece for the part of the spider's wide and flattened abdomen and held it out towards her. The spider kept still for a moment, then turned its abdomen towards Alain. Your turn. Tynes replaced the damaged shell and Asitha chuckled. Second maker found. Alain raised his eyebrow at the spider. Hey, why did you designate her as maker right away and me as only potential first? Tynes giggled. A female's touch? Alain frowned at the spider. Don't try to charm your way with them. They're my girls. Asitha laughed out loud. It just logged potential resource conflict. By the time the three had replaced every broken part of the spider, and it passed all testing procedures. They were mostly familiar with its workings. Its threat index had gone down to zero and Tynus used a rag to rub as much of the grime as possible from its body and its eyes. Did you see any mention of a name for it in the documentation? She asked Asitha. Only the technical project name, said Asitha. Not even useful to base a name on. Tynus looked at the spider. What name would suit you? How about Spidley, said Alon. Spidley? Tynus asked and looked at Alain. He chuckled. There's this superhero character on our planet called Spider Guy, he said. The way this spider drone can move with the help of wires reminded me of him and his creator Steve Lee. Then it just popped up in my head, Spidley. Tynus giggled and looked at the spider. Is that fine with you, Spidley? Asitha chuckled. The designation in the console just changed to Spidley. Tynus hugged the spider. You're now a member of the family. Alain shook his head and smiled. Can this family get any weirder? Asitha smiled at him. I think there's enough potential here, she said, and he laughed. We do need to do something about your looks, though, Tines said to Spidley. These bare parts and gray color don't suit you. There's a supply of spray paint on the Walkurea, said Alain. We can give him any color you want. Tines hummed while she looked at Spidley. I think I know, she said and took the tablet. After a flurry of gestures, she showed it to him. What do you think? Spidley touched the tablet with one leg. He must like it, said Asita. What did you choose? Tynes grinned. Secret, she said and looked at Spidley. Shall we do it right now? Spidley raised a leg and she looked at Alain. Where can we find the paint? Asitha chuckled while she and Alan went back home, and Tynes and Spidley were busy with his new paint job in the Walkuria storage. This job has turned out even further from what I had imagined when they sent me here, she said as they moved along the safety rungs on Amarat's hull. Same here, said Alan. I could imagine myself with a real pet, but a spider and a robotic one on top of that. I think it'll add to the fun we have. I'm glad we're not a normal family said Tinas over the radio. Alain chuckled. Yeah. Asitha hooked herself to the next rung and jumped forward. The hook snagged on a deep cut and the rung broke in two. Alain! screamed Asitha as she tumbled away from the hull. Alain didn't take a moment to think. He unhooked himself and jumped up with all his strength towards Asitha. He grabbed the back of her suit and threw her as hard as he could towards the hull. Asita grabbed the first thing she could hold on to and turned around. 
Alan! Alan! What's going on? Asked Tines while her fur stood up straight in fear. I fell away from the hull, but Alan jumped after me and pulled me back, but now he's falling away, said Asitha. Shit, said Alan. Go find that cargo picker to pick me up. Tines rushed to pull on her suit. I'm on my way. Where is it? Fear gripped Alan's heart. Oh, fuck. What is it? It was damaged in the fire. Asitha's heart stood still as she looked at Alan, tumbling farther away from her. Another. There must be another. I'm going to search it, said Tynes, suppressing her panic while she donned her suit, then saw Spidley shoot away along his wires. Spidley! Asitha tore her eyes away from Alan to rush back to the outer hatch of the Amaroth and search for anything that could fly and rescue the one she loved dearly. She reached the hatch and yelped when Spidley shot out of it, devoid of most of his shell. He oriented himself for a moment, then jumped towards Alain. Spidley, said Asitha as she watched him fly off. Alain saw the drone head towards him. Spidley, he said and reached out to him. The next moment wires hit his arm and he wrapped them around his wrist. Careful not to break the hold on the hull, Spidley slowed down Alain, then reeled him back in. Alain, cried Asitha and hugged him as tight as she could in their suits. He patted her on her shoulder. I'm safe now. I'm safe, Ronaldo. Ha, he said, and took hold of one of Spidley's forelegs. Thank you. You saved my life. Spidley put his other leg on Alain's glove. Tines rushed towards Alain and hugged him as well. You really scared us, she panted. It's all right now. All thanks to Spidley. She pat Spidley's head. You're awesome. After everyone had calmed down, they discovered the reason for the accident was the rung getting damaged by the early debris impacts, and they moved carefully along the hull towards their home with Spidley in tow to throw a lifeline if another accident happened. Tynus went on to finish his paint job because she thought he really deserved it, while Asita and Alang continued with their plan of getting ready to eat. Out of their suits, Asita pulled Alang close and kissed him urgently until they parted out of breath. Wow, he wheezed. What just happened? She caressed his cheek. Because you saved my life. He smiled softly at her and caressed her ear. I need to do that more often. She frowned at him and tears welled up in her eyes. Not at the cost of your own, she said and hit his shoulder, then wiped her wet cheek. Sorry. He pulled her head against his shoulder and stroked her back gently. No need, my love, no need. I'm sorry I made a stupid joke. He whispered while she trembled against him. By the time Tynes and Spidley returned, Asita had calmed down and abundant food was prepared. Tynes hurried into the living and kissed Alan passionately. She blushed when she pulled back. I couldn't stop thinking of this all this time. Sorry. Alan smiled at her. Never ever be sorry for this, cutie. She smiled softly at him then hopped back to the hatch. It's time to present the star of the day, Spidley. Spidley came in and Asitha and Alain smiled. He looks great, said Asitha as she moved up to him and knelt to admire his white body with the thick middle segments of his legs in sky blue and a stripe down the middle of his abdomen in the same color on top as well as underneath. You did a great job, said Alan and pulled her gently against his side by her waist. Spidley, welcome to your new home. Spidley waved his two forelegs. Asita? Asked Alan while he lay in bed after they wanted to turn in early and she and Tynus stood at the end. Her purring was soft but the urgency unmistakable. She sighed and clenched her thighs together while her tail swayed left and right. I can't wait any longer. He nodded and she crawled onto the bed, her eyes locked on his, and she kissed him as urgently as her body desired for his. She pulled back and lay on her side, and Alan looked at Tynes, fiddling with her shirt while her ears were flat and her tail wrapped around her legs. I'll leave you two alone then, she muttered. Tynes, Alan said before she moved. When I realized I couldn't be saved, I was frightened to death. Not for me dying, but me losing the both of you and leaving you by yourself. She looked at him. Get in bed right now, or I'll take you right there where you stand. Her ears stood up, and a wide smile grew on her face when the meaning of his words took hold. She barely held back on cheering and jumping into bed, but she still hurried to be by his side. 
He pulled her close and kissed her deep. Asita giggled at Tynes's dreamy look in her eyes and Alang caressed their cheeks. I just can't get enough of looking at your cute faces. Asita reached down his front. I hope you have more in mind than looking at us. He smiled while his whole body grew hotter. A lot more, he said and slid his fingers down their soft backs and underneath their quivering tails while kissing them passionately again. Asita and Tyna snuggled tight against Alon and purred in great satisfaction and caressed his front while he dug his fingers deep into their soft back fur and alternated kissing between them. I don't have words for how good I feel right now, he whispered. Asitha stroked down to his abdomen. I have nothing better to wish for, my love. Tines giggled softly and kissed Alan's neck. The only wish I can think of is more of you deep inside me, she whispered, and tingles of excitement crept through her body from her toes upwards and caused her tail to quiver again. Alan chuckled, kissed her, and caressed her muzzle with his nose. Be careful what you wish for, cutie. This isn't the only place I'll do it in. Tynus smiled softly at him. You don't have any hesitation any longer. I'm completely comfortable with you if you're satisfied with me. Tynus kissed him again. I'm perfectly satisfied with you. Asitha giggled and poked Tynus's nose. Seems you enjoyed being our plaything as well. Tynus blushed. It felt good. She muttered and twirled her finger on Alain's chest. Alain kissed Asitha's nose. You have a slightly sadistic and certainly lustful touch. He chuckled. I can't help it after I saw her adorable expression when you took her. She giggled. It made me want to see you both in satisfaction at the same time. She rubbed her cheek against his shoulder. I didn't even knew I had this side of me. Alain smiled and looked up at the ceiling. This would never have happened back home. He whispered. Spidley, can you come over to me for a while? Said Alain over the radio. He had tuned the receiver on Spidley so everyone could talk to him over the same shared channel that he and the girls had been using. Spidley had been asked to inspect the hulls of the Amaroth and Walkurea for further damage safety rungs while the rest were busy inside. He replied with a single tone that meant yes. See you in a minute then, said Alain. Don't be long, said Tynes. I'm done with work and will prepare the next meal soon. No worries, cutie. This shouldn't take long. Tynes and Asitha heard the airlock cycling not long after they arrived home and were busy in the kitchen. Alang came down a few minutes later with Spidley, and he embraced them both from behind and kissed them. I have a surprise. Asitha and Tynes rubbed their behinds against him. Oh, was that what you were busy with all this time? Asitha asked. He chuckled and stroked their firm curves in the base of their tails. Come see. They followed him to the couch, and he looked at Spidley waiting at the hatch. All right, show them in. Asitha and Tanas gazed at two more spider drones coming in behind Spidley. You built two more? Asitha asked. He nodded. At first I had the idea to use their wire shooters to make something we could attach to our suits and use in an emergency, but when I looked over Spidley's parts and found one more crate of those, I had another idea. The girls crouched at the two newcomers. This is so incredible, said Asitha. Spidley won't have to feel alone as the only drone. I copied most of his AI onto those two. The only things left is naming them, and of course the paint job, which I will leave to you. Tynes chuckled. I think I already know how I'll make them look, Asitha hummed. Names. There's an old children's story about a spider which traveled the world on its floating web. Tines looked at her. Tau Tau. Asitha nodded. I like that one, said Tynes and looked at the spider in front of her. Now you. The last one is up to you, said Alan. Tynes closed her eyes and pondered. Okio, she said after she opened her eyes again. An old friend had a pet which was similar to your earth dogs and he had those big, adorable eyes. His name was Okio. Alan checked the command consoles on his tablet. Tao Tao and Okio it is. From now on, each of us can be accompanied by one of them as a guard while we're outside. Tines stroked Okio's head. No more worries about our beloved saving us and endangering himself. Alan chuckled. And I was thinking about you two in the first place. Asita ruffled his hair. That's why we're so worried about you, lover. She said and grinned.